Thank you for joining Effortless Attraction. My name is Evelyn McAleer. I'm the author of A Life You Want, Effortless and The Woman's Journey. I'm a life coach, business mentor and inspirational speaker. And my greatest value is making a difference in people's lives. So I hope through these podcasts, I can make a difference to your life. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, whoever can get to join in another wonderful Effortless Attraction podcast. Well, today I am joined by a a handsome young man with beautiful teeth. (laughs) He is Michael Verges of Official Young Hunger Podcast. Michael, you are most welcome Thank you very much for having me. How are you? I'm great. Yeah. And yourself? Very well. Thank you for the opportunity. I've been really, really looking forward to getting speaking to you. So here we are. Well, it's a bit of a role reversal. You're normally the person that's interviewing other people for your podcast i'm dead yeah it's a bit of a strange one because normally i'm sort of doing the introduction and sort of letting the other person go so this is a real uh, game changer this one. Oh, great well michael's from cumber and county down county down yeah there we go cumber and county down and he made his journey up here today yeah the land of the spuds <laughs> <laughs> if you don't know cumber it's all about the, the potatoes down the potatoes, there so the potatoes. yeah 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 world renowned so and i first saw Michael what I've, I've saw his work on Instagram mm-hmm. um, where you're doing you're out doing video pod podcasts with people yeah and there's something that's what I love whenever you see somebody on video how they present themselves how they talk to other people and you've just a natural gift about you so I thought yeah. there's a guy that I want to have on my show <laughs> and uh, mm. because you have youth on your side mm. you've great yeah. teeth ah. <laughs> <laughs> shout out to my mum there <laughs> She'll be yeah. watching this here. She's very yeah, she's a dental nurse, so she's always keeping my right that way. Yeah, she, yeah. You're, I said you're a great advertisement for her. But you have a natural gift and mm. uh, a flow with you talking to people. Now, there's a couple of things that I, I'm going to. You've yeah. actually set a great standard for your podcast. I think mm. fair play. Yeah. Because what is the underline or who is it that gets on your podcast show? Mm. So, so we, we sort of, there's before I go any further, there's me. It's not just me. There's my brother. And there's Ross behind the camera, so it is real team effort. And normally, what we do is sit down. Who do we think that we find interesting? That's the number one. We wouldn't do someone that we wouldn't find interesting, um, and then sort of just go from there. It's like we, we don't want to go walk down one area. We want to go into like you know the entrepreneurial, the boxing, the sports, and all sort of means of like high achievers, high achievers, yeah, that we find interesting, and hopefully that the viewers find interesting watching us ask the questions well it caught my attention yeah actually you caught my attention more mm. so than the people you were interviewing how, how come do you know what you kind of reminded me of me a wee bit yeah I... yeah see actually i i thought that on the whenever we were speaking on the phone beforehand yeah. i was thinking flip it's like nearly talking to a mirror here yeah yeah if you were a woman in your 40s you'd be yeah Bad yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> if I was a lad in my twenties, I'd have good yeah, yeah. <laughs> So no, that's what it is. I thought fair play um, mm. that you're right, and there has to be even in doing that. Did you ha- you reach out to ask people? There yeah. is perhaps too the fear of rejection. Are we going to be good enough? Because yep. you started the podcast in November twenty one. I didn't, yeah. And uh, so I just taking that courage and confidence because what a lot of people see is that someone they set people on a pedestal oh, mm. out of my reach or yeah. maybe i shouldn't stretch for that there but you've you've set your target you've achieved yeah. what you've set now so how do you then step beyond that that fear of rejection you mm. might be good enough well that's, that's the thing like whenever before the podcast even started like uh i was a very f- shy quiet kid I had an older brother older sister and to be honest they sort of did the speaking and talking for me yeah. so i never really had to do anything like that but uh, me and my brother always just had an interest in like how did that person make it? If that makes sense. Yeah. And we thought if we want to ask these questions and we want to find out, I'm sure there's other young people looking to find out. So um, we sort of just carried on from there and sort of ended up here right now talking to you. <laughs> well, that's interesting. You said when you were younger, yeah. I was shy and I was yeah. everybody done was speaking for me. So how do you get from that to being the man? In well, front that, of the that's camera? the thing. My mum actually asked me that the other day and um, I think you just have to keep going. It's the, it's the comfort zone. It's pushing past that. See, I think the very first person we did um, is Cathal Hart. Cathal Hart owns, I don't know if you've heard of it, 
it's Atos now, custom cuts and banter lounge. He's like a hairdresser. Right, okay. And uh, whenever me and my brother first started talking about doing the podcast, um, I think it was about seven times we asked him. Yes. We rang him up, asked him, I think about three or four times, went into his shop, asked him three or four times, and he said he would. Yes. But then every time we were going to do it, he says, oh, maybe not yet, maybe not now. And uh, took seven times. And that was really, normally if I ask a question and I maybe get a rejection, you're thinking, nah, just leave it. Yeah. It's pushing past that. And I think that six, seven times, that was the first one. Uh, Chris Sutter, he was the next one. If let me, he, I was into his shop every Thursday, I was messaging him, ringing him, and I'm sort of like pushing past that. But once you sort of get the first one, you sort of get that here. Just keep going. Just keep going is the main is the main thing. You know, I'm sure you're probably the same with your um, guests and things. It's not the first time. You never really get someone coming on. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's pushing past one, two, three. Keep nearly be annoying if that makes sense. <laughs> Ask the questions and keep going. Like keep hounding people, and that's sort of how we. How we got going, I guess. So it's pushing past your comfort zone uh, constantly is probably the main thing. Okay, and then back, because there are people, and I know rightly that they're more comfortable behind the scenes, yeah. or it, social media, this is what I'm trying to help people with too, to step forward, tell people about yourself, tell people about your business, get people connecting to connect, you know, to connect to you rather yeah. than static posts. That shyness, and you said, I pushed past. It, it has to be more than just, I pushed past my confidence. What yeah. or, or my comfort zone? What was the self-talk? Mm. Well, in, I, I, think, process? I think you need to tell yourself, like, this is something we had in our head, uh, me and my brother, before even Ross, the cameraman, came on the scene. Like, this is something we wanted to do. And, like, I knew whenever, you know what, I, I, I would analyze absolutely everything. I was actually speaking to my uh, before we started at one stage, and the guy's, like, 90. And he's sitting in his chair and I'm thinking to myself, you know, one day, one day I'm going to be that age. Yeah. And I'm going to be regretting every single thing I didn't do. Yes. And I said that to my brother. I'm sort of just, it's hard to explain. You sort of went somewhere with it. And the fear of not doing it was more than the fear. Like, what's the worst going to happen here? Someone's maybe going to throw a couple of comments and maybe judge you. But after that, there's nothing really more yeah. that can be done. So I sort of took a bit of inspiration from that and thought, you know what? We're going to do this. And that that was the thing. And it wasn't a one or two day thing. This was, I think, about two years. The first idea we had was twenty May 2020. And then, as you say, 20, uh, November 2021, it came out. So there's a good year, yeah. six months nearly. Well, you're an absolute natural. Mm. I, it, it just, it seems so natural to mm. you, you know. And I love that when I connect to people. And yeah. authenticity. Yeah. You're not forcing. You're not selling. You're not trying to prove to me something that you're not yeah and uh, yeah there's a, if anyone I, I'd tell you just jump over official the official Young Hunger podcast young hunger. yeah I have to put the official bit yeah you have to get there him. yeah that's the main the part the official part and, and in front of that so on your interviews mm. you're you're speaking to as you see high achievers people yep. that have set out in business or if it's online or whatever it is that they're doing influence, influencers influencers what has been the underlying message that you have been receiving in people achieving what they see as success? You know, I was actually having that conversation not so long ago with the team. And the funny thing is, every single person, I think we've done about maybe 15 interviews, and each person has a very different exterior. Yeah. But interior, everyone is very the same. Everyone's mindset is very similar. And we take wee tiny bits from each and every podcast and sort of gel them together so then we can learn from it and um yeah they're very they're very they're very self-driven and they're very sort of set on their way on their goal yeah and any outside noise is is nothing really to them Mm -hmm. they know where they have to get to why they have to get to and everything else sort of just falls into place and even speaking to you now i get that same sort of presence if you if you know what i mean Oh, that's good. Yeah. They must be well men. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I can tell. There, that's the thing. There's a similarity with everyone. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, that's the number one thing. Do you see, uh, Michael, though, I, I had a young guy on, a teenager, and his goal and dream is to be famous. Yeah. For everybody to recognize him. He sees paparazzi. And, as I said, just be careful or mindful of those dreams. Yes, it is wonderful to have that, but... You must be that on the way to this yeah. dream because so many people and people that I work with 
and, and myself too, we set ourselves dreams and visions and they come to us. And I tell you, it's very overwhelming. Yeah. And, and perhaps people get, I thought it was going to feel different. I thought I was going to be different. Mm. Has any of your guests that you've been talking to say that, you know, on the way, it's it, or, uh, we can have destination addiction where mm-hmm. it's, when I get there, then I'll be happier. When this happens to me, then I'll be seen as success. Mm. Do you feel that, that, that and, and yourself too, because it's something that you're striving towards yeah. yourself. I think they all sort of have that feeling, but I think it's like the overall picture is the main drive, if that makes sense. It's like everyone, the way I look at it is, I'm nearly putting myself in a position where I'm walking the shoes of the man I want to become. I feel like every person we've done nearly does that as well. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Did, that answer, did that answer your question? Mm-hmm. You nearly have to be that person before you are that person. Absolutely. It sounds like absolute gobbledygook. But no, when this you, is what I, I say. When, be the change yeah. you wish to see. Yeah, exactly. So who is the man there that Michael wants to walk in the shoes of? You are walking well, by the yeah. way. Well, <laughs> that, that's the, I used to look at other people and be like, I want to be like that. But yeah. then over probably the course of 2023, 20, I've done a lot of sort of diving and been like, I don't want to be anyone else. I want to be sort of it sounds cheesy here but sort of the best version of myself yes if that makes sense i don't want to be anyone else i want to be me yeah so do you have an underlying core value or value of anything that is sort of an ethos or something you remind yourself of every day you know when you're on this journey that we don't get so carried away with the glitz and glamour and, yeah. the, and the, the ego takes a hold I, think, I think i think the family sort of keep me sort of in check um i think they sort of have to tell you it look like you guys maybe had a wee bit of success now, but just sort of remember yeah. where you come from. And like, I sort of, it's sort of hard not to talk about what you're doing and what you want to be sure. going because we found out lately, me and my brother, my dad was the exact same before the cameras and things. He was way doing, he was literally young hunger before we were. He was the generation of, of, uh, of his time in the young hunger. And, uh, we take great inspiration in that and sort you're of follow his You're from a farming background. Oh so. yeah. Yeah, well, that's the thing. He well, farming slash entrepreneurial type thing uh-huh. came from mum's side was um, farming and my dad's side was farming, but they all had that sort of entrepreneurial yeah, twist yeah, in of it. Of course, of course. Yeah, and if, that is commitment. Yeah, in that industry, it's three, six, five days of the year. You know, there is yeah. no giving up on that. But a wonderful environment to come from mm. to keep you grounded. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you, they'll say it the way it is. Yes, exactly. Michael, they'll not sugarcoat it, they'll tell you straight they'll to your face. They'll support you, but they'll keep you uh, level headed. Yeah. So, yourself and your brother are working together, and then you have Ross. Absolutely, yeah. Work well as a team. What yeah. is the key essential ingredients of having a good team? I think whatever needs said need said i feel like there's no sugar as you were saying there earlier no sugar coating if i need to tell you something i'll tell you i'm not trying to uh, hurt your feelings but i feel like honesty is the number one be completely transparent and if someone's thinking or someone has an idea um run with it sort of yeah. sort of develop i think the best thing is if i have an idea right now i maybe tell you and you maybe tell me an idea or how do you, how to grow how to grow upon that yeah yeah i feel like communication is the big one the communication you have to talk about what you want to do where you want to go because i might have something in my own head see our very first podcast i had this thing in my head where i wanted to do this talk outside at us now and walk in and then sort of took i had to tell ross and then ross is like i think we should do it this way and the overall image was nearly better than what i originally thought yeah because you had to communicate and say what you need to be said and he knows all about the cameras and angles and we wouldn't be where we are without him. Yeah. So I think you have to sort of bounce the ideas off each other yeah. and even hear the things you maybe don't want to hear at the time. So, yeah. yeah <laughs> Ho- hopefully that. that explains it. Well, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Communication. Yeah, communication. Essential in any part, I think, of our lives. Any relationship. Should yeah. it be a romantic relationship, work relationship. Yeah. No matter what. No. And ourselves too, mm. I think that communication do you, are you into law of attraction manifest Absolutely, yeah, yeah. yeah. Since, we're about thir- I was doing it since we're about 13 i was thinking yeah. of the law of attraction before i actually knew what the law of attraction yeah was yeah well it's a sort of you know what it seems very acceptable for you know it, it's a it's a spin on words it could many people could call it many different things but that you have just discussed a few things that to be the change that I wish to see unfold, to act as though the wish is fulfilled, but in the acting you're being present yeah. and to enjoy what you do. How important is the joy in the job? That's the number one. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't be doing it if I didn't, you know what I mean? There's a genuine passion for this 
and that that's where the three of us really come in as a team because we all think we all know about the law of attraction we all bounce ideas off each other and like i think the three of us are the only and have, have a couple of friends and they maybe don't think like that yeah but the three of us definitely do and we're all in the sort of save on the same frequency on the same vibration if that makes sense and uh yeah we're all we're all into it we'll have the book we all share the book all ideas. I must give you my books. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I must get reading in there. Yeah. Yeah, but it, it is the same, isn't it? That look, a lot of younger people, your age group, all uh, really talk about it. It is sometimes difficult for older people because they have been conditioned differently. Yeah. You work hard for what you get. You appreciate what you have. Don't be asking for anything more. Just And gratitude is a huge thing oh, in any of our lives. But that yeah. doesn't mean, well, how long? Maybe you would like to experience that because I saw photographs are himself yourself at uh, a car show and i yes, sent you a wee message you I did. Says, is one manifest you know i i showed, I showed <laughs> not the exact message to my brother and i was like how did, how did she know that how did she know that <laughs> in my part time i am a white witch <laughs> yeah <laughs> and he's like our heads are blown but yeah that was that was manifesting yeah, right yeah, there i've yeah. seen, seen something on facebook and i said to my mate here do you want to go and he's like yeah let's go and the objective of that was to sort of manifest and without actually see the cars yeah. in real life, feel that. So when you're heading down the road from here today, yeah. it's always, I say, when we're in our own vehicle, yeah. I give thanks. Yes. It got me from here today and it's going to get me home safe. But if I wish to experience a Ferrari or whatever sort type of car it is, to smell, you know, the, yeah. the interior of it, to, to hear the sound yeah. of it. Um, and and that all, it, it always does come into our lives but if we're in the vehicle that we are today and thinking, this old car is a piece of crap but it's, yeah. it's never working and it's not the way to go about creating things and again like this car the next car mm-hmm. your next interviewee whatever life's going to bring yeah. you'll only get to experience it for a while in your yeah, life absolutely and, and the thing is as you were saying there that's nearly an add-on you know yeah. with about the car the fact i walked into this room i'm grateful for oh. the fact i'm right now talking to you i'm grateful for even for waking up it's those little things waking yeah. up on bed having a roof over your head yeah that's that's what i'm you're nearly living the life of your of someone's wildest dreams yeah. already yeah so you have to sort of keep yourself grounded in that respect yeah gratitude is a big thing i think oh it is yeah and um would you do that much would you sort of reflect all the time yeah. I, I, you know it's whenever because as i've been doing this work and i say the, the podcast here is it's another platform for what I try to do anyway, I have to help myself first and foremost, but yeah. that doesn't mean in greed wise, but you have to, you know, someone said, put on your own oxygen mask first, but the likes of this here, see, this is where I'm in my joy. This is where I'm in my element, where I get to just have conversations. We have nothing written down. No. And just to have a natural, you know, a connection. And I love because it's your energy that also keeps my energy up. On yeah. days that I could be flat. Yes. So, and, and I love, you know, uh, talking, just talk about energy and frequency and vibration. But yes, gratitude is a, a powerful thing. At the start, when I um, started hearing about all these things, no one had to be something more. Yeah. We had to be something more. And then when people say, catch your thoughts, negative thoughts, Christ, there was one there. There's another one. And yeah. they just... Oh, you start you thinking, know, nearly. Yeah. All these negative thoughts. Yeah. So we, we start off with a practice of gratitude, just giving thanks. Thank you for my family. Thank you for my house. Thank, the things that we normally would say in, in prayer, even if we were saying that, then it gets a wee bit, yeah. well, thank you. It's in When things happen that aren't so pleasant, how can I give gratitude mm. for that now? Mm. That's, exactly. That's the, the good the and the bad, it. nearly, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. We, everything must, there has to be a, a parallel. Mm. A, a parallel does exist. Yeah, there was actually one thing I wanted to say to you, and I didn't want to t- tell you until... I was sitting down with you. Actually, on my screensaver is a message from yourself. I think it was one of the first messages. Is that right? And I screenshot it and I thought to myself, wow, like I take great gratitude in that. And, and every what time was I that look. Message? Uh, it says, you have the personality, confidence, and presence to make it all possible. So. And that was before I even yeah, knew you. Yeah. I, I, there was something. I always say, never hide back from complimenting or saying to somebody for mm-hmm. no other reason other than to tell them. Yeah. But I am very, very privileged and honoured that yeah. that's, that's your the thing. I, I, I didn't want to. I was going to tell you before. So and I thought myself, no, I'll hold on and wait until I get speaking to you in real life. So uh, whenever you sent that, it didn't so, just make the day, but it sort of 
it's you know still look at it as you say. Now you're going to get me emotional. Yeah, <laughs> but no, that's, makeup, that's, that's, makeup. I'll need the makeup artist. No, that's genuine. So <laughs> thank you. Well, that's, thanks. That's lovely, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And that is not what life is. Just one wee act of kindness with no other intention other than just I wanted to tell you. Yeah. Mm. And as far as I was concerned, sure enough, the company could have been telling you, "Cheers, mm. you're great, you're this, you're that, you're the one, you know." And you could have received it however you wish to receive it as well, thinking, "Oh, your one's just looking on the show here to yeah. send me a wee old compliment." You yeah, know? it's funny people oh, here. People here nearly the the one I like the see like seeing you do well nearly, mm. but sometimes people nearly. It's, I don't know, like whenever we were starting, friends of mine were like, "Why are you doing that? It's cringy," you know. Just stop nearly, and yeah. you're thinking to yourself, "These are friends that are meant to be backing you." And then yeah. next thing you know, uh, you find out who the the real ones are. So I keep keep a real tight neck group of genuine individuals yeah. who are all sort of thinking alike, yeah. and uh, sort of work it that way. And sometimes people, they, it's their fear. Yeah. I think people's uh, communication is their fear. Um, and I know whenever I started doing what I was seen as good friends, and I still they're there some road. I mean, the salary fairy talk. Yes. And that's but I ended up then our communication with that particular person. It was all what I call surface level. The price of rice. How's the children? What's the th- you know? And you couldn't actually have a conversation because the things that I perhaps wanted to speak about, I couldn't go there. Yeah. So it's lovely. Mm. But how, how, how did you feel that? How did you feel when someone said said about dairy fairy stuff? Did you think yourself? Well, I tried not to. I, I I tried not to get angry. Firstly, I didn't see it as a reflection on myself because perhaps this person that said it to me, they were a big church goer. Yeah. They were there every turn round, and I wasn't. And I thought, how is this? You know, if I talk about universal energy or a, a God or whatever, but, but not in the biblical sense. I mean, how is this? It confused me. Yeah. But um, I always would see them people as my master teachers. So this person's come into your life. You have to learn how to master patience, Evelyn. Mm-hmm. And by God, I was like, right, learn. If you because if that conversation irritates me, it gets on my nerves. I have yet learned the ability to master patience. So I need them teachers every so often, and it can be tried. I yeah. just think, Evelyn, you haven't mastered patience yet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's good, though. You're nearly, you know that, too, if you know what I mean. It's, it's good that you, now, if it's, everything's not going to go your way. No. And dealing with that. Look, people will skill. cross our paths, I think, just for a particular reason. You know, mm-hmm. maybe that friend was in my life at that time when I needed maybe parties or holidays. That's what that friendship was. Then I changed. Yeah. It's not, it's not that the other people change. I changed. So therefore, the friendship changed, you mm. know, and, and it's the same which happens in a lot of relationships, should it be even your family or romantic or work. If you choose to do work on yourself, your energy changes, your vibration changes, your frequency. It's not that your friends change, mm. you change. Yeah. So just because I have shifted doesn't mean they have to. Mm. And that's the way I see life, really. Yeah. That way. Your vib- you were saying there about your vibration. Yeah. Do, how did you sort of come into... That, did you always sort of have that sort of? Um, no, that's a whole. That, that <laughs> uh, my first book uh, in that. I mean, you see, what I I knew there was something more. I mm. always knew, but all that we were taught or knew about was God, the man in the clouds with the beard. Yeah, and I thought, there has to be more. There has to be more. So through time, and I felt like a complete lone soldier mm-hmm. that nobody else. But again, which I realise now, of course, nobody else was talking because. Uh, I was just attracting the same people that was on the same frequency as myself at that time. Um, then I sort of I started looking into quantum physics as well as I'd be very spiritual, but that mm-hmm. doesn't mean religion mm-hmm. um, and energy wise and into the scientific end, which I was kind of nervous thinking of all these things that I believed in these years. What if it doesn't exist? But what I realized and Greg Braden and a lot of wonderful Joe Dispenza teachers, they're scientists, these guys and like they talk the same language as scientific. It's the same language they might talk about universal or, or the field of infinite possibilities, which is the same as someone might call the word God. Mm-hmm. So it's just get so it, every 
the message is being delivered from all sources and that sometimes people need proof sometimes people just need feeling sometimes people won't believe but either way we're manifesting 24 7 mm. it's ourselves that is creating our own reality rather yeah. than reality is making me this way and if we believe that reality will continue to make you that, that mm. way. so that's a short version of my story but yeah. i think we have to get to the we get to a place in our lives where the other we're down on our knees and we're begging for help. I need, you know, we're in a dark place. Mm -hmm. Or we have just, which a lot of people have been, they've been broken and they have fell to the depths of despair and something's come along and it's awakened them sort of thing to see different things. Yeah. And then the likes of yourselves, we get to hang out with people all the time. It's just talking about yeah. uh, manifesting. And so it's good and it's acceptable. And yeah. it's, talking and it's like it talking in the mirror, as yeah. you were saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it keeps yeah. you on a good level. Mm. There you go. You managed to flip that one. Right? <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. I'm I'm the one no real answer asking the questions from strangest way. <laughs> no, I, I like I like sort of asking the questions that I find interesting, and because yeah. I know feel like uh, even going to like networking events, there's a whole, whole lot more people think like that than you think, or yeah. think more like that than yeah. than what you think. And I, I think that's absolutely incredible. I was at a I think network event there on was it last Friday, and we were standing. There was a couple of us standing, and someone mentioned about the law of attraction, and for the first time ever, everyone was like agreeing and, yeah. and nodding. And I was like, this this is nuts here. Yeah. Like normally, if you say that, you're weird, or yeah. what are you doing? Yeah. But like, and it goes deeper and goes you know bigger than that also you know yeah. love it. but it's i think people will take an understand of words that they can compute that's understand that's acceptable acceptable yeah. words you know mm. um and it's a, a fascinating like i mean I, I listened to something there last night greg braden was talking about and to me it makes perfect sense mm. to someone else if i was having the conversation that i heard last night it would sound strange yes so law of attraction is acceptable manifesting is acceptable those words um now but mm. as you say look we're here for a certain period of time you you, you reflected on your grandfather the other night and yeah. i'm thinking i am going to be there one day mm -hmm. and i don't want regrets in my life and i'm going to choose great experiences and hopefully and through that wonderful people and opportunities are going to step into your life michael yeah. mm. and you are I say for me as a, a a woman in her late forties, looking at your work and thinking, isn't that fabulous? You know what you're doing. I'm quite sure that you inspire a hell of a lot mm. of other people. So I'm going to leave you with the last words here. Okay. Somebody um, that really wants to step up, create their own business, mm -hmm. um, and because by the way, so quite a lot of this say like. 70 percent is a quite a high percentage of podcasts fail within the first couple of years because people have these expectations and want these things to happen mm -hmm. but it's your passion and your love which you've mentioned there a while yeah. ago someone wants to start their business someone wants to do something um and their friends are, like you say they're for you they're not for you what's the best advice you say come on let's do this just start just just do it just uh, just for the worst thing that can happen is maybe a few e comments here and there, but the real friends will stand by you. Mm -hmm. And if you want to start, just start. There is absolutely nothing holding you back. Yeah. If you think about it, what what is stopping you? It's all in your mind. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just just start, and then maybe don't focus on the views or the or uh, the likes or anything like that. Focus on the content, and the views and likes will yeah. come. Yeah. And that's exactly what we did. And we, we don't we don't even look at the views and likes. We focus on what we're putting out and how can we provide value in your life. Yeah. You were saying there, hopefully we've sort of give value to someone else. Yeah. Even the way my brother said, I think there was one or two, um, maybe on the first podcast, I was like, I said to my brother, the self-doubt was coming in, this is all new. And I was saying to him, like, maybe like, people laughing at us. And my brother says, even if this podcast helps one person, your job is done. Yeah. And he told me that this is where it's good yeah. to sort of communicate yeah. and reflect. Yeah. And I thought to myself, it was nearly like a, a light bulb moment. Yeah. He's right. Yeah. You know what I mean? And if that helps two people, don't worry about the money either. Yeah. Help focus on the content you're putting out and yes. the value you can give the others. Yeah. And that is the advice I would give. Just do it. And as energy is, it'll all be returned to you. But exactly. enjoy what it is yeah. that you do. 100%. Well, Michael, I'm so glad that we got to chat today. Yeah, really, really liked it. <laughs> and got to know a bit about your thoughts inside yeah. your mind. Yeah. Thank, you. thank you for having me. This has been really, really... Really, really good, and I uh, really, really. You didn't feel intimidated in any way, did you? No, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you're grand, you're grand. 
No, you're Nobody all good. <laughs> Michael, thank you so much. Now, check no out problem. Official Young Hungry. He has it on the t shirt. That's even, it. Even on the t shirt. You should have brought me one. I actually do have one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. Excellent, excellent. Yeah. Thank you, Michael. No problem. And uh, it's been a pleasure. Yeah, thank you for having me. If you would like to become a paid subscriber to Effortless Attraction, you'll find the link in the main profile. Every subscription makes a difference to my life and you'll also receive exclusive podcasts. Thank you so much for your continued support.